Hello, everyone. Welcome to West Virginia University. On behalf of Presti and Guy uh, and our Board of Governors, please welcome to, to all of you to this exciting event, uh, exciting news being shared today, and with a really, really a, a good crowd today from, from people in the media. From Thank you for all the media to being here. Uh, thank you to Marshall University as well, who are going to participate. Uh, of course, we want to thank our special guest today, where we have uh, Diana Sao from the uh, Virgin, One, Virgin Hyperloop One team here on campus, as well as, of course, our governor, Governor Justice Sin, for being here today. It is an exciting time, and when you think about not even a year ago, we had someone here today at the same room uh, where we make the announcement of bringing John Chambers to campus and being, putting his name in the, in the business school, making it the John Chambers College of Business and Economics. But that day, we also mark a change a change in our vision for the future, a change where West Virginia will, will be part of the innovation economy. And he challenged us, not only WVU, but also the whole state, to work together with the, state, the, the uh, Economic Development Office at the state level to start thinking of how, how we were going to take those leap forwards as a state, how we were going to leverage the great people we have, the great resources we have, the great vision that we can bring to a table, and transform our state bring West Virginia forward, bring West Virginia into the innovation economy. So not a year ago, that just happened. And now we are here trying to forge a partnership with a company that is as innovative as you can think, that saw the future of what the future of transportation could be. Virgin Hyperloop One is trying to bring a leap forward in transportation of how we move people, how we move at different speeds, and how we move into the future that we have not seen in many years when it comes to the transportation infrastructure. They are moving fast. They are they're trying to move, uh, make, the, make it possible to transform, transport individuals from Morgantown to DC in 40 minutes at speeds of 600 miles per hour or more. Well, what is not more fitting than having that company come to West Virginia where we're trying and we will move at that speed. We will move the state forward at that speed. We want to be the ones that can actually transform and really bring that into fruition. We are moving fast and furious. And when you think of the engines that are driving that, a Research One University that has been challenged, that has been put, put, putting its best resource forward to take our faculty, take our students, take our people, and make sure that they can take a bold step with a vision that will not only depend on one industry, but will diversify our economy. That is what we're trying to do, and that is where we, uh, events like today play such an important role to make sure that we continue to move at that speed. That is something that can only happen in West Virginia. That is something that can only happen with a new mindset, a new mindset that started a year ago so not over 13 months have gone by, and look at how far we have come, where we can start thinking of partnership like this one. But I would also like to invite uh, another individual to talk to you a little bit of what is the research infrastructure that WVU can bring to the table and support this kind of R&D that is needed by uh, Virgin Hyperloop One. Let me introduce to you Earl Simi, who is the Dean of the Benjamin Statler College of Engineering and Mineral Resources. Earl. Thank you, Javier. So I'm going to uh, wax philosophical for just a moment. So when I was very young, a long time ago, uh, I spent a lot of time reading books by a great author, uh, Robert Heinlein. And one of, those, one of my favorite books was a book, and I imagine the Hyperloop folks know this book, called Starman Jones. And the story begins with a young man growing up in the mountains in a rural, rural village uh, on a farm, very poor, and he would watch hypersonic, well not hypersonic, but supersonic trains go by and dream about his future. Now, I checked last night on the, on the web, he actually grew up in the Ozark Mountains, but the Appalachians, pretty close. Uh, but I can, I can tell you quite clearly that that sort of inspiration of what can be in the future is what led me to a career in science and led me to uh, West Virginia University. So here now in the Appalachian Mountains, we have an opportunity to build an element of that exciting future. So with the Benjamin M. Statler College of Engineering and Mineral Resources, 
we are ideally suited to partner with Hyperloop, West Virgin Hyperloop as they embark on their new venture. As Javier said, WVU is a research one university, one of about 115, 120 universities in the nation who have that status. And for over 125 years, WVU has been training engineers that have made major contributions to the nation's progress in computing, transportation, mining, energy production, manufacturing, and a host of other engineering disciplines. Our engineering faculty, such as current Professor Hoda Gango Ro, are world leaders in the use of composite materials and civil infrastructure that provide high strength, fatigue resistance, and improved weathering conditions for civil infrastructure like bridges and, and other systems. Members of our mining faculty have been elected to the National Academy of Engineering for novel, de novel developments in mining. Our award-winning aerospace faculty have built a thousand acre test facility at the Reedsville Proving Grounds. That facility is available for use in collaboration with the Hyperloop team as a potential site to test vehicles and other aspects of their systems. West Virginia is no stranger to being at the forefront of transportation technology. I did a little research last night. In 1852, the B&O Railroad built what was then the longest railroad tunnel in the world, getting trains from the East Coast to the Ohio River. This sort of innovation is where West Virginia University can help lead and work with the Hyperloop team in the future. There are just a handful of universities in the nation that have strong programs in civil engineering, aerospace engineering, mining engineering, and our own expertise in safety, material science, and manufacturing. Given that spectrum, I believe the university's engineering college is ideally suited to work with our Hyperloop partners. So speaking on behalf of the Statler College of Engineering, we are excited about the prospects of having Virgin Hyperloop One here. We are excited about partnering with them in research and development, in training, in manufacturing, in safety, every aspect of their facility. And in terms of WVU and the state of West Virginia being innovative, I'd like to introduce Sarah Billa, who, who will talk about our innovation ecosystem that we're developing here at WVU. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sarah Biller. I'm the executive director of the newest innovation effort at West Virginia University. Uh, we have stood up an initiative um, in the inspiration of John Chambers and with Javier's vision leading Startup West Virginia called Vantage Ventures. We are an intentional cross-industry and cross-campus, frankly, collaboration to bring new um, and stand up new technology companies here in the state. We want to both retain and attract individuals like Diana and her team at Virgin Hyperloop One to recognize the depth of the talent, the technical expertise, as well as our commitment to advancing new ideas. I think we can all agree that West Virginia has long powered dreamers. We have been the source of energy and inspiration for the last industrial revolution. We are now entering into the next digital phase, and I can't think of a better place for us to advance the power of those ideas than with the Virgin Hyperloop One team. And I'm so appreciative that we had a chance to talk to them today about a potential partnership. With that in mind, I do want to introduce the head of strategy for Virgin Hyperloop One, Diana Zhao. She comes with a deep expertise both in the capital markets and financial services, as well as strategy. Her undergraduate is from the University of Chicago. She then went on to the Kennedy School at Harvard, who have been great partners of ours um, in our efforts of innovation, and now more recently at the University of Chicago. So Diana, thank you, and we welcome you to the stage. Thank you very much, Sarah. And thank you all, West Virginia, for welcoming us. Um, it's been a incredible uh, day. We literally just arrived here uh, very late last night, and we've been in meetings um, with your team and with uh, folks from West Virginia University and Marshall University. And it really has been a really tremendous and very uh, warm welcome for us. So thank you guys um, for hosting us. Um, we're really excited to be here. Um, I lead project strategy at Virgin Hyperloop One. And as a part of my responsibilities, um, I lead our projects and policy work at the company. 
Uh, we're a company of about 400. Uh, we've raised 400 million in private funding so far. We have 200 employees um, at our headquarters and Los Angeles. And we have a very exciting test facility in the deserts of North Las Vegas right now where we've done a lot of testing for the last two years. Uh, we have our pod that has reached up to 240 miles per hour in just a third of a kilometer and then stopped. Uh, so it has been an incredible feat of engineering. Uh, we've been working hard to make this Hyperloop technology commercialized and realized um, over, the next, uh, over the next few years. Uh, what we're working on now is, and the reason why we're here today, is we are looking for a home for a Hyperloop certification center. Um, and we are working with um, the state of West Virginia to understand how we can partner together to make that a reality. The Hyperloop Certification Center is a place where we hope to obtain regulatory approvals um, for Hyperloop um, so that it can be commercially operational and safe for passenger operations. We're really excited by the amount of interest and excitement that we've seen here in the state. Um, and we're also matched by excitement at the federal level. Um, some of you may have seen that earlier this year, the Secretary of Transportation, Secretary Chow, stood up a non-traditional and emerging transportation technologies council under her office to look specifically at new technologies like Hyperloop that don't fit cleanly, cleanly under any existing agency. And we've been very excited by the amount of interest that's been shown at the federal level as well as across the states. We're really looking forward to continuing the conversation here over the next uh, day or so. Um, we have been really, really impressed by the caliber of people and by the interest of the, those folks that have been um, in the room with us here today. And we're looking to uh, we're, we're looking to uh, work, work continue to work with everyone here to see how we can move this forward. And with that, I'm going to introduce John Marr, who is the Vice President for Research at Marshall University. Um, he's also the Executive Director of the Marshall University Research Corporation. Previously, he was the Executive Director of the Chemical Alliance Zone. John. Thank you, Diana, and thank you to the, uh, the team from the Development Office of West Virginia University who made our participation here possible. I bring greetings from President Gilbert. He uh, wishes to express his commitment to this project and, and his sincere interest in learning and doing more. And I've been corresponding with him, with him this morning uh, by text, letting him know that the future that is being presented here is even more impressive and, and staggeringly impactful than uh, we had been led to believe in the lead up to this. Diana, we are really impressed with the team that you have assembled in, in terms of your testbed facility at the Hyperloop in, in Las Vegas, and we look forward to bringing the academic resources of the state to bear wherever we can to solve uh, some of the problems that you might encounter and innovate in new ways that will help advance the cause. We'll bring a flexible approach to prototyping and manufacturing through the Robert C. Byrd Institute, the expertise of our Appalachian Transportation Institute, and all the resources, including the large-scale civil engineering test facility at our College of Information Technology and Engineering. So we're really looking forward to this. I'm a technology geek, and I'm really jazzed by this. So I'm looking forward to further discussions and that we'll be able to follow up effectively with you to, uh, to make this thing happen. My next role up here is to introduce our collaborator in chief, the man who exercises his best efforts to get us all to work together and has been doing a great job. I am proud to say he and his family are Marshall graduates. And without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Jim Justice, Governor of the State of West Virginia. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm going to just grab this. We got it. And I'm going to just twist this around a little bit. And I'm going to talk to you from here. You know, if you just if you just step back and just think, in West Virginia, in West Virginia, you know, you've got Virgin Hyperloop One. I mean, it's amazing. And Diana, from your standpoint, we can never possibly thank or appreciate you enough. We're going to do any and everything we possibly can to, to where we hope and pray that this is going to be your next almost heaven home. And uh, 
And in doing so, you can see we brought commerce, our National Guard, transportation, revenue, DP. We brought everybody. We brought all the king's horses and all the king's men to try to come, to try to answer any and all questions and let you see just what expertise they have. You know, I try to rudder the boat, but they are doing phenomenal work. That's all there is to it. But the main thing that you've got to know is just this, is right here, this university is phenomenal. It is unbelievable what's going on at Western, Western Union University. Also, to think that now that we're collaborating with Marshall and Marshall's here and great stuff going on at Marshall. The bottom line is just this, and this is just all there is to it. We have really changed in this state. You see, we have really become different from a state that really, in many ways, was the blunt end of not very good jokes. And whether we were referred to as dark and backward or whatever it may be, now we're really being looked at as the treasure that we just happened to miss. And from that, there's many things that are happening right here at our fingertips. We're exposing now how good we really, truly knew we were. And in that, you know, you have, you have all the traits that are just right at our fingertips. You have the location of who, where we are. You have this incredible seasons and people and the craftsmanship of the people that's off the chart. I think eight times maybe our surrounding states as far as metal fabricators, you know, that have the, the people have the capabilities of doing that. You have a people that are appreciative and family. You have absolutely us as the right place for things that could come to us just like this. This is, this, this system absolutely would transform our whole being in every way. You know, there's the level that these people think on and perfect and dream about is absolutely just amazing. Amazing. Imagine getting in a pod and moving somewhere at 600 plus miles an hour and doing it with magnets. Am I right in that? It's unbelievable. Unflat believable. You know, it is, and, and to do that and us have the opportunity, maybe, just maybe, and again, you run everything to ground. That's the thing. Is this a concrete reality? Well, it's not today. We've still got a lot of hoops to jump through. Hyper hoops, you know. <laughs> but as we jump through those hoops, hopefully we're going to land. What better place could there ever be? Think of all the innovation. Think of all the dedication. Think of the commitment from their veterans to all that West Virginia has done. And think about it being our home. It would be phenomenal beyond belief. So again, we're going to work. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do my job as your commander from the standpoint of a business guy, not a politician that passes on great comments and everything and doesn't understand or do anything. I have tried with all in me to do all kinds of different things within the businesses that we've had in the past, and I've done a lot, a lot of stuff, and I've made a lot of mistakes, and you learn from those mistakes, but I'm the business guy. I'm not the political guy. I'm the dreamer. I am so much you, it is unbelievable. And so that's what I want to be. And at the end of the day, I can never do anything other than thank you and thank you from all of us in every way for giving us a chance, giving us an opportunity. And so there's expertise beyond belief right in these walls or in the walls of this state that can help in any way, and we're going to do it. 
Now, I've got one last thing to add, and this is absolute concrete proof, concrete proof of the beginning steps. The people that may have had the vision years and years and years and years ago of being in the pod, and I'm going to show you where they are. And, you know, you're going to be amazed with this because I just saw this. And I just walk with me just, and just look. And I would go this way and just look. There they are. Maybe here they were, right here. <laughs> That's them. And now you're taking us to a level like you can't imagine. So, so I don't know when this was, but... It was a long, long time ago, and so we, we thought about ways of transportation even then, and now we're going to an all-new level. So thank you for so much. I couldn't, I, I had to do that because I kept looking back there and I kept thinking about this. So again, thank you. Thank you so much. Don't get too technical. Well, we have great expertise here to handle the technical, but we'll answer any of your questions. No. Diana, you need to be right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Governor, this uh, sounds like a great opportunity. Uh, you put together a package there for the North Central Regional Airport to kickstart that project. Sure. Uh, when you say you're willing to do anything, what, what, what does that mean? Is that, is that an effort similar to down there? Or? Well, we'll surely see. You know, naturally, you have constraints, you know, from a technicality standpoint, a legality standpoint. You have constraints monetarily and all that. But just think about this. And, and I think someone can, well, I don't know, can we, can, we can't really tell what happened at the airport quite yet, can we? But we've got good news that's coming right, right off the get-go about the airport as well. Things that are happening just because of what we did, you know, now. And, and so I would tell you this, that we have got to be competitive with all and any around us, any and all in our nation. And we want to do any and everything we can within our framework to be able to help and to bring these people here, you know. And so anything that can be done to not stress, stress us economically, and it can be done within the technicality and the legality and everything else, that's what I am all for doing. You see, I'm a real believer, and I've said so many times, you know, you get sick and tired of me saying this, but it's right. It's right. Anybody that's not proud of their own pond isn't much of a frog, you know? And, and, and for crying out loud, if you're proud of your own pawn, you're willing to invest in your own pawn. You know, that's just it. It's working. For crying out loud, it's working. Can you imagine, can you imagine how this would change our image? Can you imagine what this would do for us? Unbelievable. That's all there is to it. Let me just say this, and then I'm quiet. I got to go to Camp Dawson just a little while ago. And the guard and what they're doing, General, is unbelievable. You know that. And there were six young people, one lady, five men, that just graduated from a program they had there to train those people how to run a motor grader. Now, it doesn't sound like all that glamorous a thing, but it's big time. Big, big, big time. Those people now are on their way. They may have had issues with addiction or whatever, but now they're on their way with real life training to be able to get a real job. And one of the guys that was there had just received his second job offer that morning. And one of the job offers was a supervisory offer. Think about it. Think about all the stuff we're doing. We are genuinely changing our landscape. We have now got this Jim's dream, jobs and jobs and hope, you know, that, that, that changed and went to that. 
and there's things happening. We have got 650 some applicants in a month. We're bringing ourselves back. We're changing our image. We're making our doors welcome to this beautiful lady and this incredible, incredible company. So, yeah, it's good stuff. Ma'am, is there a, a timetable and dollar value on the certification system? Our timetable is aggressive. Um, we are a company that has very big ambitions. Um, we're unapologetic about those ambitions, and we are looking to commercialize this system as soon as we can. Um, we are hoping to start construction of this certification center um, in the next few years. Um, we will work with the team, with each proposing team, to understand what that could look like um, here in West Virginia. So um, it's difficult to say at this moment. I would say that many of the conversations that we're having today um, will ultimately lead to a tighter timeline and a tighter cost figure, but um, those, are, those are active conversations that we're having at the moment. We're hoping to make a decision um, in terms of the location by mid next year. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Hello, I'm Brad McElhenney with West Virginia Metro News. Uh, as you are here in the state and as you travel to other possible contending states, I know it's fluid, but can you describe the kinds of factors that are being considered? Uh, location, facilities, expertise, financial incentives? <coughs> Definitely. Um, all of those are really important to us as a, as a company. Um, you know, the first thing that we're looking for is kind of the land and the infrastructure that's available. Um, what we're looking for in, this, in the certification center is roughly um, a stretch of land that's about six miles long where we can build our tube and guideway system where we can continue to do testing and certification um, of the system at that location. Um, in addition to that, we are also looking at um, support um, from the research and academic um, institutions in the, in the areas. Um, we're looking at how we can work together with universities, with research partners, um, to really build this new mode of transportation and the expertise that comes along with it. Um, so think of it as a major testing facility where international regulators and um, suppliers would come here at the, to the certification center to do a lot of that testing and certification um, and, and build that technical knowledge in-house. Um, the third thing is we're really looking for um, support when it comes to developing a regulatory framework. Um, nobody has done this before. As I mentioned earlier, um, it doesn't really even fit into any existing agency currently. We're not rail, we're not like a highway, we're not like a plane. So what are we really? And having a Department of Transportation and various transportation experts that can help um, facilitate that process and help guide um, that process at both the state level as well as at the federal level is going to be extremely important to us. Um, the Secretary of Transportation um, in the U.S., as I mentioned, has been extremely um, supportive of this, and we're looking to work with a state that also has that kind of same level of support. Um, financial incentives are going to be important for us as well. Um, we as Virgin Hyperloop One and our investors are prepared to, to uh, potentially relocate a lot of our um, employees to build a facility here. Um, and with that comes jobs, comes investment into the area, and so that will be a big factor for us. Um, all of these are factors in, in helping us make the decision in, ter in terms of where we want to locate the certification center. Um, it, is, it is ultimately going to depend on each proposal. Right now, we are working with about 22 states um, that have expressed interest. Um, our first deadline for the proposal is uh, mid-December, and we will have a much better idea um, after that. Sure. 
Um, it is, you know, you could think of it similar to um, other autonomous vehicle test sites that are being developed and piloted around the U.S. today, um, or uh, sites, uh, rail testing sites. Um, we've looked at that as well. Um, but broadly speaking, it will be um, a an area, a facility where we can get up to um, higher speeds. So. Um, you know, roughly three or 400 miles an hour, depending on the track, maybe even five or 600 miles an hour, um, where we will continue to do high-speed testing. But in addition to that, we will um, work with supply chain partners as well as with um, technical experts to develop the certification processes around the portal operations. So for example, we have a pod that is similar in some ways to an aircraft and similar in other ways to a train. Um, understanding the boarding and unboarding process, how we get people in and out of those pods, um, is going to be one of those things that we test and certify um, at this facility itself. Um, so it is, it is not just testing for speeds, but it is also testing for operations and certifying for operations. Um, the other component that is going to be a really important part of this is um, the safety aspects. So um, as part of the certification center, understanding what the emergency procedures are um, and walk, being able to walk through um, those processes with a regulatory body um, is going to be really critical for us. And then finally, uh, a very important part of this center is developing the ecosystem to build and commercialize Hyperloop systems. And a big part of that is actually training the workforce to operate these systems in the future. These are new types of jobs, and I want to emphasize that is a new skill set that doesn't exist in the market today. Be, but the, being able to have those software jobs, being able to have those operational jobs to train the people that ultimately will be running the system is going to be a big part of that. Do you have some estimate of the number of workers who would be required to operate the center? And is there, is there, a, there a particular plot of land in this area that is under consideration? Um, as to the land, I believe there have been discussions um, as to where it could be located. Um, I know we're actively thinking about what that could look like with various partners in the room. Um, and, you know, uh, in terms of the, uh, the number of jobs, I would say it's, it's probably in the hundreds of, of people that would be, uh, you know, that would be utilized to operate the, the, the center, but ultimately it will really depend on the configuration of what that center could look like. Um, and that's something that, you know, as a Los Angeles-based company, um, you know, as, as a company based in California, we don't want to come in and, and say that this is what it could look like here. We want to actually hear from the state of West Virginia what this could look like in West Virginia. We want to understand what you guys are interested in as well, how we can develop um, not just um, the, infra the physical infrastructure here, but how we can really develop the expertise um, with suppliers, with the universities to do a lot of that manufacturing assembly um, operations here. So it will really be an ongoing dialogue that we hope to have with all of you over the next few months in terms of defining and designing what that certification center could look like. It's certainly helpful. <laughs> it's certainly helpful. I mean, if we could build a hyperloop between Morgantown and DC, um, it would be 40 minutes, you know, a 40 minute ride. <laughs> so that kind of uh, that kind of travel is, is definitely helpful for us. Okay, so where do we sign? <laughs> <laughs> right here. So, let me say this, and and. And, and I, I say this very selfishly. Bring those people from Los Angeles here and let them experience all these incredible people in these unbelievable seasons and stuff, and they will beg you to leave Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then right behind that, you know, think of the expertise and the willingness of these people, and think of the proximity of DC, how close that is and everything else, and all the other things that we've got going for us here and everything, and please, Please give us a real look because, uh, you know, we'll, we'll break our necks to have you, that's for sure. No, we really appreciate the, the support. Um, as I've, I've mentioned to some of 
um, your team as well. We've been really impressed by the support and just the excitement that you guys here have here in West Virginia. It comes through very clearly to us, um, and we are very much looking forward to continuing to work with you guys. Well, that's great. That's great. And the last thing I know is just, just, just imagine, I don't know if this just went by you on everything, but just imagine it's their testing facility in Las Vegas. Is that, yep. you know, okay. They have a track that's 500 yards long, and is that right? Mm -hmm. well, just imagine that. That's not a whole lot more than the football field, okay? Mm -hmm. It's true. And they've <laughs> already got to where they can shoot a pot down through that thing and, and come up to a speed in, in excess of 200 miles an hour and stop it. You know, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And so, you know, this isn't like, you know, this is just a thought. I mean, they've really been working on it and everything. It's really amazing. Yes, sir. Uh, Sarah, this is, question is for you. The recently opened Vantage Ventures, and obviously these are multi disciplines that would put this together. How does Vantage Ventures uh, step into that? And if you could step over there, sure. that would be great. Happy to stand by, Diana. She's been a good partner in all this. <laughs> <laughs> we have collaborated together to form today's discussion point. Um, understanding more deeply where we resonate across all of our technical expertise, uh, engineering, as well as the commitment of, um, for instance, the government and General Hoyer is here today. You think about really what it will close, what it will mean to us to close some a partnership with a Hyperloop One. We will have to look at every aspect of our state's assets and bring them together. And it is, this is from ideation all the way through, as we've talked about, to operation. For Vantage Ventures, though, this is precisely the thing that they, Correct. Yeah. Yes, that's right. I'm glad you remember that. Yeah, <laughs> no. but it really is. If you think about what we intended to do when we set out, it was to really deeply um, lever our untapped pools of talent and research to stand up and partner with um, technology companies. They're oftentimes called disruptive. I think we would use the word evolutionary. This is a next generation of activity, and it is coming. And we need to be squarely in the center of it. Thank you. You said you're even going to ride on the PRT, is that right? Yes. <laughs> Tomorrow morning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming, everyone. If there aren't additional questions, we'll be making arrangements for you to talk to people offline. Thank you so much.